I'd like to give you a really basic introduction to the QGIS interface, just so that you can get started with exploring your own data. So I've opened up a new project here and you'll see I've got some menu bars across the top and also this, this table of contents where my layers are going to sit as well. Now, don't be concerned if yours doesn't look exactly like this when you, when you first open it up. So sometimes there's different default settings and you may have different, different menu bars, toolbars, and you may not even have the table of contents up here as well. So if you don't have it, I'm just going to turn mine off and I'll show you what happens if you don't have it or if you accidentally lose it for yourself. So let's go up to view and all you need to do is go down to panels and you want the layer panel. Now the other toolbar that I really find useful to have, if you right click on anywhere in the toolbar area, you'll see there's a range of different toolbars that you can have. But the one that I find most useful to have up is the Manage Layers toolbar. So I like to click that one up and you can see that it's now appeared on the left hand side. And again, maybe this was already there for you when you first downloaded. Now what I'm going to do is to open a raster data set in the first instance. If you have a look over on the left hand side, here's where you add your data sets. So we've got vector, raster, and we can also add in files that come from a shape file or a comma or tab delimited file as well. So there's a few different options there and here's also where we create our own. But I'm just going to start by adding a raster file. So this is a drone mosaic that I have already created and you can see the file path is already in there for me and I'm going to go ahead and add that into my view here. Now you can see this is a beautiful image mosaic of a number of different photos. But one, thing's with, one thing is with raster data sets is that they must always be rectangular because they're made up of square pixels, right? So you always end up with these black areas which are where there's actually no data filling those pixels there. And I think that's a little bit ugly. And so I like to remove that from my first instance. So if we right click on that layer there and just go to properties and you'll see that down this, down this left hand side here, we can go into transparency and I'm just going to hit zero for that because I know that those background values are zeros. And let's see what happens if I hit apply. So that's great. Now I've gotten rid of that background. I haven't actually deleted it. It's just not visible here in my image. Now sometimes you want to change the symbology of different layers. For, for me this is exactly perfect as it is. So the red band is being colored at, by red, green is green and blue is blue for example. But if you've got a false color composite that you want to put in through there, that's where you change it as well. And obviously there's a range of different options for your layers there too. So I'm just going to hit OK because I'm quite happy with it with my data set appearing just as it is there. Now one of the other things that we usually like to do is to add another data set in that's going to provide some contextual information to where we are. So I like to add in a base map and I've got a number of different base maps that I can choose from. But there's a couple of things that I need to do first to be able to access that. So you need to make sure that you have an internet connection when you're doing this particular thing. So we're going to go into plugins and to manage and install our plugins. And if you start typing open in the search bar at the top, you'll be able to see the open layers plugin. And I just need you to tick that one on. And once you've got that ticked on, we can go to close. And then at the top, we're going to go to web and the open layers plugin here. And this is what's going to allow us to access all these different types of base maps. And for the area of Heron Island, I actually kind of like the open street map here. So let's pop that one in. And now the first thing that you'll see is, is we're zoomed in quite, quite strongly here. And it's now appeared, if you look in the table of contents, it's appeared it's sitting on top of the Heron Island image that we had. So it's actually covering it. So this is one of the first things that we can learn about the table of contents here is that the layers are drawn in a particular order. So at the moment I have open street maps, maps sitting over the top of Heron Island. If I want to see my particular drone mosaic there, I've got two options. First of all, I can tick off open street map and we can see that my data still are there. Or the other option that I can do is to click and drag it and just put it lower down so that way we have our drone image sitting over the top and that's a much better way to display it. This is always something that that can be a little bit confusing when you get started just to make sure that you understand the way the layers are working there. 
Now the next part that, that really just helps with your navigation when you're, when you're learning how to use this software is just understanding where the zooming and panning tools are. So they're just up in this toolbar up the top here. So we've got the hand which it's already set on that's going to allow me to pan around my data set and of course I can zoom in like this by drawing out a box and zoom in all the way to my data and in the same way I can also zoom out. Now I can also use my mouse to do this as well so I'm just using the touchpad on my laptop here to zoom in and out so whatever feels comfortable for you to do that as well. Now one thing that I do find quite handy to use, say we're zoomed into an area and we want to get all the way back out to the extent of the layer that we're interested in, if you right click on that in the table of contents, you can just click on zoom to layer and that's automatically going to get you the optimum zoom for that particular data set, which is a really nice handy way to quickly get to a zoom level that you're interested in. So I encourage you to work through these zooming and panning tools and explore your own data just so you get confident with the way the interface works and then we can start looking at how we actually can use it for, for different forms of geospatial analysis.